Welcome back everybody. So this is the second part of section 15 and in this section, in this subsection, we are going to learn about what's traditionally called interactions. And interactions are interactions between inputs of a regression model and mathematically they are quite simple. It's just that you add another input which is a product of two existing inputs. But when you actually use these models, interactions are a very useful tool if the inputs are somehow dependent of each other, like if the effect which one input has, the strength of this effect, if that depends on another input or that kind of thing. And in particular, in the case of this section where we are discussing factors, so categorical input variables, in this case, we can use interactions to get models where the slope of the regression line depends on values of a factor. So we could get for one level we have a negative slope, for one level we have a positive slope or that kind of thing. So let's see how we can do that. Let me first explain where the term interactions comes from. So let's assume we have one output and one input and another input and we would like to write y is beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 but somehow we know that beta 1 is not constant, but depends on x2. And that is of course no longer covered in what we have done. So if we do beta 1 as a function of x2 times x1, that is a fine model, but that is not a model we would discuss in linear regression. And there is one exception to that, namely if beta 1 is a linear function of x2, then we are still good. So if beta 1 of x2 is say alpha plus gamma x2, I'm avoiding beta here, then y would be beta 0 plus alpha plus gamma x2 times x1. And if I expand that, I get beta 0 plus alpha x1 plus gamma x1 times x2. And despite the presence of this product here, that is a linear model because it's linear in the coefficients. So it's linear in beta 0, alpha and gamma. So the only thing we need to do is for this case is we need to add a new column which is x1 times x2. So that's the case we can do. So in general, if beta 1 depends on x2, it's no longer linear regression. But in the special case where the dependence is linear, then we can just squeeze it into a linear regression model by adding this new extra column of data. Good. And for this reason, if you add new inputs, which are the product of two of the original inputs, these terms are called interactions in traditional statistical language. So an interaction in linear regression is a new input variable defined to be the product of two uh, right, or original inputs. Okay, so that's what an interaction is in traditional language in linear regression. And because that is a traditional concept, there is some support in R for that. So there is a colon, which is just a shorthand for multiplication. So we have seen we cannot write Lm y triddle x1 times x2 because the times has some special meaning here. But instead, if we want that, we would need to use this function i, which just disables the special meaning of both star and plus inside the i. And as I just said, colon is the shorthand for this, so that command I could also write as x1 colon x2. So colon stands for multiplication, and that is read as an interaction term. That works for more than two, so I could write x3 here, that would be the multiplication x1 times x2 times x3. Good, this is one thing. And traditionally, the interaction terms are only included if also the base terms are included. And for that reason, there is another shorthand. So if you do y twiddle x1 times x2, that's the one we just said has a special meaning. And the special meaning is that it's shorthand for lm y twiddle x1 plus x2 plus x1 interaction term with x2. Okay, let me just show that to you in R. So let's just use some dummy variables. So if I do x1 is numbers from 1 to 5 maybe, and x2 is, I don't know, 
one, 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 zero, zero. If I do that, then we can see, we can use model matrix to see how R constructs design matrices from these. So if I just write x1 plus x2, we've seen that before, then we get this as a design matrix, and that makes sense. There is here a column for the intercept, which is constant 1. Then there's a column x1. We defined x1 to be the numbers from 1 to 5. So that's what we get. And then x2 we defined as 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. So that's also what we get. And I'm not quite sure what that means, but it's not very interesting for us. It's an attribute attached to the matrix, so it does not affect the numerical values. So the numbers are just what's here. Good. So the first case of just plain interactions, that is just the product of x1 and x2. And we can write that as this. So with the colon instead of the product. And if you look at that new column, that's marked x1 interaction with x2. And that comes out as 1, 2, 3, 0, 0. That's the factor 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 multiplied with 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Good. So that's easy enough. And I can take out x2 here. So then we have just x1 and x1 multiplied with x2 as expected. And we have already previously seen how we can do things. We can use this function capital I, which just prevents R from doing magic things with the operators plus and times an exponent. And in this case, we should get the same result. So if we do that, you see the column heading has changed, but that column still is the product of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with 1s here and zeros there. Good. Now, the reason we need to use this capital I if you write the multiplication sign is that R has a special meaning for the multiplication sign inside LM and model matrix. And you see what that is. Namely, if I write x1, x2, then I get x1 and x2 and the interaction term, which is x1 times x2. So then I get all three. So that's a useful shorthand. And similarly, let me just do an x3. Let's say that doubles everything. So 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. Then if I write x1 times x2 times x3, then you see what happens. It does x1, x2, x3 separately. Then x1 times x2, x1 times x3, x2 times x3, and x1 times x2 times x3. So that also makes sense. And there is another thing we can do. If we write x1 plus x2 plus x3, we know what we get. We just get the columns x1, x2, x3. But there is one more special bit of notation. Namely, if we square that, then it gets similar to before, x1, x2, x3. And then it gives all the order 2 interactions. So x1 with x2, x1 with x3, and x2 with x3. But it's important to keep in mind that is, again, even if it's called interactions, it's still just the product of x2 with x3 here, for example. Great. And if I would write third power here, then we would also get the third order interaction. So we have these, then we are back to what we did before when we just wrote x1 times x2 times x3. Good. So that's how we do that in R. And the reason that is in the section about categorical variables is that interacts very well with categorical variables. So if we go back to our old data, let's say we have y is something, I don't know, some values, and then here are some values, and then we have our, say, red and green column here. And there's no blue because we had to remove this. And the data here will look like 1, 0, or 0, 1, or 0, 0. That's the possible values. And now let's put an x here, which we use for the interaction. So let's say here is x1, x2, x3. Then if we think, what does this do? So we have yi as beta 0 plus beta 1 xi. And then we have the terms which come from this. Namely, we have then, I don't know, let's write beta twiddle 1i again times, I write an indicator function here, I just write one red to say a one if it's red, and we have beta twiddle two i times the indicator function if the sample is in the green class, plus the error. So that was how far we got in the previous section. Now, if we add an interaction term, then we would have 
I don't know, let's just call them Gamma Triple One and so on, then we would have all products of this with one of these. Because these two represent one variable, we would not have products here. That would not make sense because they would be all zero anyway. But we would, so if we write x interaction with, let's call the extra column color, then we would get two products here because color is now represented as two columns. And that would be gamma twiddle one i, say, xi times the indicator function of red, plus gamma twiddle two i, xi times the indicator function of green, plus epsilon i. And you see what's going on here. So these terms I argued earlier because they just have a one in front, they will become part of the intercept. Let me copy that to a new page. So these will become part of the intercept. And you see here we have x left. So these terms, which where there here is a one or a zero to select whether the term is in and out, they will become part of the slope. So we have yi is, if we are in the red group, we have beta 0 plus beta twiddle 1 plus beta 1 plus gamma twiddle 1 x plus epsilon. We have beta 0 plus here beta twiddle 2 plus beta 1 plus gamma twiddle 2 for the slope x plus epsilon for the green group. And we have beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus epsilon for the blue group. So you see again these new regression coefficients are relative to the reference ones. But this time we, with the interaction term present we have some change for the intercept but we have also a change for the slope. And that is quite convenient for some data sets where you just have different slopes depending on another variable. Okay, great. So this is what I wanted to tell you about categorical input variables. And what we've seen is we don't need to learn any new techniques or so. The whole trick is to cleverly code these input variables so that they become numerical. One categorical input will turn into several numerical columns in the model in general. And then we use what we have already done. So for these models, we can use all the results about tests and confidence intervals and so on, which we have seen before. And the new thing is really just this method of encoding categorical data for inputs. Good, so that is all for today. So see you soon and bye bye.